Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us uh, today. My name is Washington Wedderburn, and I am the SDK uh, product manager here at AGI. And today we're going to talk a little bit about some of our visualization capabilities that uh, we're bringing to bear in SDK. With me is Alex Wood. Alex is uh, one of the technical leads on our 3D development team. And uh, Alex is going to talk a little bit about some of our technology um, that we're, we're bringing out slowly but surely within SDK. Alex? Thanks, Wash. So uh, what we're going to cover today is you know, it's building upon uh, a lot of the new features that were released in 11.6, which was we brought 3D tiles to the 3D globe and SDK. We're, we're continuing them uh, to follow the momentum behind 3D tiles and what they bring to uh, our application uh, by hooking up more data providers. Uh, you know, there's a lot of amazing data out there, and we want to make sure that um, if you add your data in, uh, whether it be on GCS for one of our on-prem solutions for hosting 3D tiles, or maybe up in the cloud in uh, a provider such as CZMI, and we want to make sure that we could get those onto our globes. Just to, I guess, uh, take a step back um, and demystify a little bit of what 3D tiles is, a little refresher. 3D tiles, it's a um, OGC community standard and uh, it's really a specification just for a spatial data structure, for how you define level of detail and break down these big models into uh, manageable little chunks for, um, you know, really driven by performance, right? We've been doing this for a long time in, uh, you know, SDK in the form of terrain. I mean, uh, we have global terrain data and we wouldn't, uh, you know, the application would be hopelessly slow if we were rendering every single vertex of um, you know, at full resolution for the entire globe. And what you do is you render, you know, based on how far away the camera is, you'll be rendering the level of detail that you need in order to uh, seamlessly convey the detail that needs to be presented. So 3D tiles is the is specification that achieves uh, those, same, those same goals. In 11.6, we allowed SDK to pull a 3D tile set from local disk or uh, connect to the on-prem solution, uh, the geospatial content server. There's a lot of data that we uh, found. There's some amazing data that's out there in uh, CZM Ion. Uh, actually, I have it here up here on the screen. Uh, you know, CZM.com you can go to and sign up for a free account. And uh, you'll be connected with a lot of uh, curated data sets and also uh, a means of uploading, optimizing, and hosting your own data. So, so now that I'm logged into my account, uh, we can see a list of uh, the assets that I have available to me. Those are public assets? Uh, so some of these actually, uh, let's take a look at this AGI headquarters. This is a photogrammetry model of the building that we're sitting in right now. And I uploaded this and it, uh, it processes it. I think I it. see my car. Yeah, you can. I can see my car too. So it uh, processes it into a 3D tile set. And um, uh, then it's there and it's uh, hosted in, as you can see, this 3D tiles format. Um, but they do offer uh, in this asset depot... Uh, they offer some curated tile sets if you'd uh, like to add. Um, there's Vericon uh, tile sets, which are um, pretty spectacular. Uh, you can just add these to your your own collection of assets. Okay. So we have assets in Cesium Ion, but we're here today to talk about how we can see these in SDK. Uh, the way you do that, the way you give uh, authorization to, um, uh, to, to share a tile set with external applications or your own Cesium applications, is through access tokens. And um, what we can do here is create a new token, and uh, we'll call this uh, AGI, right? And I'll uh, give, you know, you can control the permission level, and we'll say list and read. And I'll choose that I just want to select AGI headquarters, that's my own personal one, and we'll also put put Cairo and AGI headquarters in there. So this is the curated Pericon, uh tile set. Um, so it's listed there. I'll copy this token. And then what we'll do is we'll configure SDK so that we can actually see those tile sets. So that's done through our edit preferences and our data services. And if uh, you'll, you'll notice that we have this new section for CZM Ion. And if I go in here to configure, I can uh, add access tokens. Um, so from that other screen, you know, we'll call this you know, uh, whatever we'd like to call it, just some human readable name so we can see what we're putting in there. And you just paste that token. And now those tile sets that I uh, put behind that token are now available to SDK, or to my SDK instance. And the way you get to that 
It's the same that we did in 11.6 for getting to GCS or local tile sets. Click on the plus button and add three tile sets. When we go to hosted, right? Uh, normally we'd go to uh, the geospatial content server and we can log in, that's single sign on. And you log into the enterprise data services and that's, uh, once you're logged in there, you're, you'll always be logged in. But instead we'll actually choose Cesium Ion as our server that we're grabbing tile sets from. And as you'll see here, the tile sets uh, that are listed are the two that I selected and put behind that token. So let's say we wanted to look at uh, the AGI headquarters, add that to our globe and zoom to it. There it is. So we can go ahead and zoom in and look at all the details. And this is a pretty uh, high, highly detailed uh, three tile set. Uh, if we wanted to add Cairo, and we can just look at a different type of tile set. Uh, so both are photogrammetry models. Uh, the AGI headquarters it was uh, captured from a drone flight, whereas uh, Vericon data that's actually kept, it's photogrammetry built off of satellites, uh, satellite imagery. And so when we add that to uh, the globe, then we can go ahead and zoom to Cairo, and actually turn the terrain off because they are both kind of co-located there. And you can see. Zoom in on the pyramids down here. You get some pretty spectacular detail from uh, the photogrammetry that was captured on this on this uh, source data. That's excellent. So uh, each user can essentially curate their own data set mm -hmm. on cesium ion and then access that from SDK anywhere, essentially. Correct. Right. They'd have to. So each user would have to add their set of. Uh, access tokens that grant them permissions to various tile sets. So, um, you know, an organization could theoretically subscribe to um, or, you know, have, have an account on ION um, and share that token with everyone in their organization. If um, now CSVON is a cloud-based solution, again, we do offer GCS, which um, under the hood, it's this, uh, they're, they're using the same tiling uh, tools. It's all the same. It produces the same uh, data and they can interchange between the two platforms. But um, a, ge a geospatial content server is more of like an on-prem solution, right? So if you want your data sets, your uh, organizational data sets, not in the cloud, but maybe behind your own firewall, you'd use a solution like that um, uh, to, to actually get those onto your globe. Yeah, excellent. Uh, so this is the, the latest uh, release of SDK that includes this ability to communicate with cesium ion. What do we have to look forward to down the road? Yeah, so what we're uh, looking at in future versions of SDK is uh, support for other payloads that you'll find in three tile sets, such as point clouds. Um, and we're also, uh, we'll be identifying and incorporate, integrating three tiles into some of the other core mechanics that we find in SDK. All right, well, thanks, Alex. That was informative and visually very appealing. So <laughs> thank you very much for watching. Thanks.